All right, Michael. Uh, so you're hoping I could take a look at your success uh, log and let me know some thoughts. So let's check it out. Okay, so just uh, before we dig into it, uh, just for all the viewers, uh, here's a picture of the craft. Uh, looks like you have a low SCESR capacitor on there. At least I can see it's a capacitor. Uh, 1,000 microfarad. Okay, so you have four ASCs around there. And then um, you have PV antenna. One thing on this, just make sure that that's not vibrating around there uh, or, or having some resonance on that antenna. Uh, also, uh, electrical noise versus vibrations on the quad are very hard to distinguish between the two and uh, capacitors on the ESCs versus one on the main has I've heard I have not proved are a little bit better that's that's what I run so take that worth a grain of uh, salt and you know as a possible consideration looking at the diff it looks like you have the classic uh, PT1 filter turned on uh, set to 110 Hertz both gyro notches are off. Looks like you have RC interpolation turned on and set to manual and set to 15. Looks like you're running D shot 1200 and a D term LP, uh, PT1 low pass filter of 120. So let's jump into the log. Looking at the log, first thing up, cut right to the chase, is your D terms are too high. So let's bounce out of this view here and check that out. So Right up here, I'm on the, looks like the roll axis is more, has more vibrations than the pitch or yaw. So I'm gonna focus everything just right to the, the, the noisiest axis, which look like is roll. And if I zoom in to just the uh, gyro plus PID roll, you can see the yellow here, which is the D term, has a ton of noise on it. And more concerning is the amplitude of your D term is outpacing the amplitude of your P term, which is a red flag. So what we really need to do here is your D term, uh, you have set around the defaults. So the defaults in beta flight are 30 and 35. You need to probably start, take those down to 20 and start from there. Um, especially with 6S, I would think that would give you a little bit more torque, uh, I guess, for the motors to get up and get going. So you shouldn't need as much D term. You might even be able to go lower than that. I've seen some um, logs where people were down in the teens, high teens, for D term. So uh, I would take them down. Maybe personally, I would, you know, try 10 and kind of work them up using the uh, line of sight method that Stinger Swarm has in his video uh, for setting D. But I would start down at 10 for both, and then start doing your line of sight. Um, actions left right so on and so forth it also looks like you have on pitch you brought up d term pretty well so the defaults are here 40 uh, 58 so you have up to 73 there uh, you know it didn't look like your pitch access wasn't a specific issue i can pull that up pretty quick here and look at your your red trace here is your p term trace so i didn't see anything of issue more than just this D term should not be, you know, twice the amplitude of the P term. So that's number one to address that. Going back and just looking at uh, noise in general. So let's pull up your pre-notch. Uh, again, I'm going to focus. You can see there that's the pitch access. I'm going to focus on the roll access because you have a little bit more noise here. Uh, if I juice that up a little bit. You can see uh, your peak motor noise is around 231, and it's kind of broad-based here. That's probably going to be a little troublesome for the dynamic notch. The dynamic notch loves noise that looks more like this, where you have a nice spike. Now, that was all the way up. So you can see this quad here with this trace has this, this nice spike it's around 284 on, on this axis at least and the you know the dynamic notch can sit right on top of that now for for yours you know it's gonna hover right around here but then this noise out here is not gonna be very well attenuated uh, and you can see that coming through if I'm on the 
roll access here and I jump out. I'm sorry, I think it was on the pitch access there. So let's go back. Let's just uh, click on here. Yeah, so there I'm on the pitch access. That's where we were before. And if I go to my gyro notch, now I have to move this slider up a little bit here to see it, but you can see that the noise right here where the peak was was attenuated compared to what it used to be in height. But you're still having some breakthrough um, from the 300 up to around 500, so on and so forth. You can get an idea of where that da dynamic notch is working if you want to do a debug mode FFT instead of the debug mode notch. And I have a video on the dynamic notch. You can check that out. I'll link to it in the upper right. And uh, then you can see where the dynamic notch is spending its, its time and seeing if it's if I'm right with that or not. I would think with your quads amount of noise that's breaking through, I wouldn't be pushing these up to 110 and 120. I would leave these down at 90 and 100 to get more attenuation. One thing I would try as well is to bring in that stage two filter. So my video on uh, quads running 4K, 4K or 8K, 8K, you know, not running the 16 or 32K is you really, that stage two filter is meant for those quads running because they're going to get noise in this higher spectrum a lot more than you see that you have here. It's pretty much killed out by 600 hertz. So that's where the stage two filter comes into play to help attenuate that noise. However, you can use this stage two filter and set it at 200 or 250 to help kill this noise. So give that a shot. If you have my latency calculation tool, which you I have a video on that, I'll link that to the upper right hand corner. Um, you can download that and you can see it doesn't add that much latency and it might, you know, even if it does, if, if it's helping enough with noise attenuation, that's a good trade-off. You know, add, you know, point, you know, half a millisecond of latency or something of that nature. Um, it's not a bad trade-off if your D-traces are a lot smoother. So just popping open the filter cap quick curiosity for myself is I moved your stage one back to 90 and your D-term low pass filter to 100 so you can see we're up around uh, 1.5 milliseconds of estimated milliseconds of delay here so one of the things I was looking at is that okay well what if we do leave that at 100 and 110 and 120 you're down at 1.5 so that's kind of where you're at now and then if I turn on the stage 2 and set that at 100 or 250 you're at 5.1 so a little bit less than moving those down, but now you have the added benefit of this entire filter at 250 and above, killing that noise. So I, I would think that's a better combination. One of the tricky things about looking at noise is if you know if you look at the pre-gyro notch, so it's pre-notch noise or pre-filtering noise, and I turn down the amplitude here, so let's just bring it up maybe just a little bit. You can see that you know it's a decent amount of noise. It's what we were just talking about. Then I look at the gyro. And it's knocked, it's knocked down really well, and it looks like, oh, that's, you know, that's pretty good. And then, uh, you know, you look at the P-term for roll, and, yeah, it kind of comes back a little bit. Um, it's not too bad, though. But then when you look at the D-term, that's when things go out of control. Now, in your scenario, the reason these amplitudes are so high is because of that D-term or that uh, D-gains. So once you turn down those D-gains, this amplitude won't be nearly this high. So I think that's really... You need to get those D gains down. You need to, to uh, record another black box, then start looking at the noise profiles again uh, to see if adding additional filter with associated latency is really needed or not. My, my primary concern is that your, your, the amount of noise that's, that's showing on your D term, and that's linked to those D gains as well for amplitude. The other thing I would do, if this were my quad, is I saw you had the RC interpolation turned on for the, uh, for the yaw and the throttle as well, which is definitely good. It uh, looked like you had it, I think it was at 15 if I recall from the diff. You might want to bump that up a little bit to smooth out a couple little of these. These is uh, side, this is not really causing any issues, but I usually look for it to just be a touch smoother than that. I think you're kind of right on the edge. I would probably 16 or 17, maybe even 18 to 
to get that those couple milliseconds. I don't, I don't think anybody can feel that kind of stuff, but maybe, maybe you can. Um, so that's just my two cents on that. I did dump it into plasma tree because it's the new thing I've been doing. And uh, again, what it's showing here a little bit. Now this could be off because of the amount of noise on the D term that's you know pushing this artificially down, but it is showing that you might be a little light again on uh, roll or sorry, this is the pitch axis pitch uh, for moves that are less than 500 degrees per second request and on uh, roll as well, a little bit light. Looks like your yaw is pretty good though, uh, which is, is usually not the case. It does show that um, you may want to have a little bit steeper on the P term, so a little higher P term on pitch and yaw, uh, more pitch than y'all, which you did have cranked up quite a bit. So I don't know, take that for uh, what it's worth. It's just a data point. It does look like, you know, the, the bluer these lines are versus yellow, that's really indicated towards uh, a latency piece, uh, either through the PIDs or filtering. Uh, so it's looking pretty blue uh, from the logs I've looked at, at least so far on this. So that's looking pretty good. Um, so that's that. When you are looking at your logs yourself, do make sure you're turning the smoothing off. By default, it's on. You can see with it on, you know, it's still, you know, very, um, very jaggy, very oscillating D term, which is bad. And you can see how the D term is just driving the PID sum. This is the PID sum down here. That D term is just totally controlling it because of the the amplitude of it. But anyways, if you turn off smoothing. Then you can see that the story is actually much worse. So uh, that's that's critical. And I don't know if the overactive D term is causing this from motors. I don't know how hot your motors are getting, but you know, only being uh, into the flight, you know, nine seconds, you're pulling about 70 amps, and your battery's sagging down to almost three volts per cell based on what it's showing. And there was a couple of low voltage warnings very early on. I don't know if the battery is just bad or it's super duper cold. It could be super duper cold there. Uh, so something to, to look at. Uh, that's not shouldn't sag that that fast and that deep. Uh, again, it could be because of the D ting, the D term could be because it's super cold, or it could be uh, possibly because of this D term overactive D term and trying to update the motor so frequently that it's turning that all to heat and you know just wasting your battery. All right, I hope this helped. Uh, like I said, I would go out, get the D-term, lower that, record some logs on that, take a look at the noise filtering, so on and so forth, address it. It's kind of a combination between your D-gains being too high for the amount of noise that's getting through. I would start with lowering the D-gains first and then start to see where the noise is. Feel free to post up more logs to the RC groups. Sorry, it did take me a little bit to get to this one. I'll uh, try to do better. I've been trying to keep all the balls in the air here recently. But anyways, uh, thanks again, and I hope this helped.